Hello everyone and welcome back to my journey of creating a city builder game from scratch using my own engine and this week I'm going to be implementing people and pathfinding. So obviously a few things have changed in the world since I last made a devlog video. I hope you're all doing alright and staying safe. I'm staying very much isolated as I only recently had my last lung operation but that all went well. I am now done with operations and so I'm looking forward to getting a bit more consistency back into the development of this game. So as I said, this week I'm going to be implementing people and I'm going to get started with that right now. First up, as always, I've been setting up the rendering process so that I actually have something visual to look at while I'm developing the people. And for the people, I decided to use instanced rendering, which if you don't know, basically means that instead of having to render every single one of these people individually, I can just tell OpenGL to render this model a hundred thousand times, or however many times I need. So that means that all of these people have been rendered in a single draw call, and um, it's basically just a very efficient way of rendering the same model many, many times. So next up today I need to do some work on the entity system, which I've been putting off for a long time, but I don't think I can put it off anymore. And this is just everything to do with how the entities are stored in the world, how they're updated, how they're sent to be rendered. Um, so I've just been planning it all out and I'm going to implement it now. Pretty much finished with the entity system now, I've implemented a component based architecture again. So that means that all the objects in the game use this base entity class and then any functionality is added to them in the form of components. So for example, if for some reason I wanted a house to bounce, I would create a bounce component and add it to the house entity and then in the game the house would be bouncing. So the component based architecture just makes it very easy to add any functionality to any of your entities. So I've just been putting the component based architecture to good use and I've just created a movement component and added that to the people and you can see in the game they are now able to move around. For now the movement component is just making them move completely randomly so they're jittering all over the place here but obviously over the next few days I'm going to be doing lots more work on the movement and their pathfinding AI. It's 6.30 in the morning, I thought I'd get up nice and early today so I can get outside for a bit before anyone else does. And then when I get back, the plan for today is to do some more work on the movement code and allow the entities to start following specific paths. So back in the movement code now and first up this morning I've been doing a bit of maths to write this go to target method which allows the person to always walk towards a specific target and you can see I'm trying that out in the game by making the person always go towards the mouse cursor so it's just following around the mouse and it's doing a pretty good job of that. I'm quite happy with the movement so far, it's fairly smooth, I'm sure I'll improve on it many times in the future but for now this is good and uh, I can move on to the next step. So now that entities have the ability to go to a target, I can start introducing the concept of paths into the game, and uh, a path is basically just a list of targets. So you can see me placing some targets into the world here, and for the sake of this video I've made them visible, and then the entity here, this guy can just go from target to target, it goes to one target, when it reaches that target it turns its attention to the next target, and um, as you can see that basically means that I can now define a path for the entity to go along and it will now follow that path. Um, obviously at the moment I'm having to manually place the path markers but the next step is to get the game to determine where the path should be on its own. Just before I stopped lunch I've been smoothing out a few of the movements, um, for example when the entity did a 180 degree turn it would flip its rotation instantly and I've just been smoothing that out so that it does now actually do a turn and uh, I also added a slight walking animation, although animation might be a bit of a strong word here, um, but you can see it's rocking left and right to imply that it's walking. Anyway, I'm going to stop for some lunch now and then this afternoon I'll make some more steps towards implementing pathfinding. Mm -hmm. 
So the next step that I want to implement is to start automatically generating the path markers to show an entity how it should traverse a grid square. So for any given road tile, I need to be able to generate a path on the pavement, which will allow the entity to get from one side of the grid square to the other. This afternoon has been a little bit of a struggle. Um, I've spent a long time trying to work out how exactly I'm going to implement the path generation stuff into the current road system, but I think I'm on the right track now and I've got it working with the straight roads at least. So in the game, what I can do now is I can click on the road tiles and then the path markers are automatically generated, creating a path on the pavement for the entity to follow. So you can see our little guy here now knows how to follow the pavement to get from tile to tile. And obviously it's not particularly impressive for the straight roads, but the more interesting roads will be coming up tomorrow. Good morning everyone, it is seven o'clock on another lovely sunny day and uh, I've just been getting ready, doing all of my plant chores. Got lots of plants to look after at the moment. Um, not just the house plants, of which I have many, but also on the balcony I've started growing vegetables, radishes and tomatoes and carrots. And then in the kitchen I'm also growing some microgreens. Uh, I've got some pea shoot and broccoli microgreens on the go at the moment. And then recently I've also started growing alfalfa sprouts, which are the easiest thing to grow ever. You just put some seeds in a jar, keep it watered, and then a few days later you've got some tasty sprouts. Um, but back to programming. Today I'm going to be working on the path generation again, and I'm going to start off with the curved road. Back to work on the path generation stuff now, and I've just been implementing it for the curved roads. So you can see our little guy here is now able to correctly navigate all of these curved pathways. And um, just to give you an idea of what I'm doing in the code here, this is the method that generates the path markers for a curved road and you can see up the top here I'm generating two curves, one for the inner pavement, one for the outer pavement and I do that just once when the game loads and then all of the curved roads in the game base their path generation off those two curves. So all I really have to do in here is to make sure that the rotations are right and it's just a few simple calculations to generate the path markers. The next road tile that I've been working on is the T-junction which is quite a bit more complicated than the other two roads Firstly because it has three individual pavements, but also because I wanted to add crosswalks at the intersection to allow the people to cross the road if they needed to. And originally I was going to put the crosswalks here, which would have formed this rather messy network, which I would have had to navigate. Um, but luckily I then had the idea to move the crosswalks back a bit, uh, forming this nice closed loop, which made things a lot easier because if I knew the entry points and the exit points of the person from the tile, then all I had to decide was which way round this loop they should travel. So I implemented that into the game and you can see our little guy here now happily able to walk across these T-junctions, crossing the road if necessary. So that was a bit of a long one. I'm gonna take a bit of a break from programming now. Um, I want to plant some more radishes on the balcony and then I'll get back to it and finish the final road tiles. So I've only really got one more main road type to implement, uh, which is the crossroads, but I think I'm actually going to skip them for now, just so that I can get on to pathfinding so that I can have that working and be able to show it to you in this video. So I'll come back to the crossroads another time. Um, one more thing before I move on, I just wanted to point out that all of the path generation stuff also works with different road types. So I can change the width of the pavement, the width of the road and all of the path markers are still put in the correct location because they're being generated mathematically based on the dimensions of the road. So it's very nearly time to implement pathfinding and uh, just in case anyone doesn't know pathfinding is basically like searching for a route in Google Maps. The pathfinding algorithm just has the task of finding the shortest routes between A and B and this is how the people in the game are going to know how to get around town. So one thing that I could do is I could give all of these road tiles to the pathfinding algorithm and just say here are all the road tiles, find the shortest path between A and B. 
and that would work, that would work fine, but in this example there are about 150 road tiles, so that's quite a lot of processing for the algorithm to do, and there is a way that I can simplify this massively, and that way is to represent the road system as a network using the intersections as the nodes of the network. So for this example here, the network would look something like this, and you can see that I can leave out all of the dead end roads because they're not going anywhere, so they're never going to be part of the solution. And then I just need to add in one more node for the start position and one node for the destination. I can also add weights to these edges to indicate how long the roads are so that the pathfinding algorithm can find the shortest route. And then that is it. The pathfinding algorithm can then work with these seven nodes instead of having to work with the 150 nodes. So obviously it's going to be a lot quicker and it's still going to come up with the correct answer. So this morning I've been working hard implementing the network that I was talking about yesterday and here it is. You can see these lines here all representing the edges of the network and it also automatically updates whenever I add new road tiles. And uh, you'll notice that each edge of the network represents a single road between two intersections. So for example, this edge here represents this curvy road between these two intersections. So everything is now ready for the final step, which is to implement the pathfinding algorithm. So I've just been implementing the A star pathfinding algorithm and it's done, it's working. It was pretty quick and painless to implement, just these two classes here. And the people in my game are now finally able to move around the town on their own. So I've got a guy here and let's say that he wants to go to his favorite coffee shop, which is all the way over here. So all I'm going to do now is to click on this tile here and you can see that it automatically generates a path all the way from the person's starting position to the coffee shop. And just a quick recap of everything that's going on here. So the pathfinding algorithm is using that network that I created to find out which nodes the person should travel to in order to get to the coffee shop. Then from that list of nodes, I can get a list of the road tiles that the person needs to travel through. Then for each of those road tiles, I use the path generation to generate the path markers, showing the person how to travel from one side of the tile to the other side. And then finally, using the movement codes that I programmed right at the beginning of this video, the person is able to move from one path marker to the next. And that is the entire system completed. Just stopping for dinner now after a very successful day of programming. Um, I'm actually having a salad made from the pea shoots that I was growing in the kitchen, so that'll be tasty. And uh, for the rest of the afternoon today, I've just been optimizing a few things in this whole people pathfinding system and there is still loads to optimize and improve and build upon, but in general I'm really satisfied with it. I think it was probably, this whole thing that I've been working on this week was probably one of the most complex systems that I've ever implemented, so I'm just very glad to see even the basics working. So that's pretty much going to be it for this week. Really happy to be back developing again, and I'm looking forward to putting out videos a lot more consistently from now on. But for this week, that is it. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.